The first thing we're going to do is right click and go to Setup Menu. We're going to go to Network and then change Static IP to Dynamic IP. We're going to hit the IP Detect button. What that will do is allow the DVR to talk to the router and fill in most of this information for you. When this is done, we're going to change it back to Static. That's going to allow you to customize these settings as well as lock them into place. A quick tip, I always take the last three digits of the IP address that the router has given me and change them to 211. This puts the DVR outside of the DHCP range and it's usually a safe number to use. The gateway is the number that you use to get into the router. This is an important number to have for later. As far as the DNS server numbers, if they start with either a 192 and look anything like the gateway or have zeros, that is incorrect and will not work. A good place to get these DNS server numbers is to go down to the help screen, go to the next screen over, and we provide three of them right here for you. You can use the first two. Write them down and put them back in the other screen. Let's go ahead and enter those numbers now. We we'll leave the mobile port at 9010, and we're going to change the web port from 80 to 8245. The reason being for this is that in the northeast, 80 usually gets blocked. If you forget this information, you can always go to the help screen, and it will tell you right here if port 80 is blocked, change it to 8245. From here, we hit save. Next, we go to the router, writing down the IP address of the DVR, as well as the two ports that we need to forward. From here, we're gonna to go to Internet Explorer and type in the gateway that we got from the networking screen. The gateway, again, is the address to get inside the router. With most Linksys Cisco routers, that gateway or IP address for the router will be 192.168.1.1. Also, for most Linksys Cisco routers, the username and password will both be admin. Once we get into here, it'll bring us to our basic setup. And what we want to do is go to Applications and Gaming. From here, we're going to go to Port Range Forwarding. You can accomplish this also by doing single port forwarding, but in my experience, Port Range Forwarding does work most of the time. We're going to give the application a name, in this case, DVR. And now we're going to type in the ports that we had on the networking screen of the VMAX. In this case, it was 9010. And we're going to put 9010 in both places. As far as protocol, we want to use both TCP and UDP and we're gonna enter in the IP address of the DVR and make sure that you enable it. We have to do this again for the other port, so we'll name it DVR2. The second port is 8245. And of course, we want protocol to be both. And again, enter in the IP address of the DVR. Hit enable and hit save. Last, we're gonna to go to the DDNS screen Check the Use DDNS button and change the web port to 8245. We're going to give the DVR a name. And we're going to hit the Check Start button. This will tell you if this name is available or not. If you get a message back saying that the name is good or is not good, that means you have forwarded the ports correctly. If you do not receive a message back, that means that it did not work. Once that is done, you will use this name, VMAX dwddns.net to get online and see your DVR from your mobile apps or your computers. And that's how you network a VMAX DVR.